Hello and welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. And this is the uh, match preview for Everton's trip to face Newcastle United on Tuesday night. And I think, you know, before this week, um, that is, you know, going to be quite a big pivotal week for our season, you'd imagine three games in seven days. I think this Newcastle match beforehand was kind of viewed as maybe the one where you know, the closest thing to a free hit out of this week, but after the um after the result away at Bournemouth, um, I think suddenly uh it becomes a lot more important and uh, yeah, a lot more um importance is gonna be placed on getting a result which uh is not ideal because um our record up there is not good at all. Um you know, obviously the last few years against Newcastle it's been a bit of a Almost a rivalry, kind of out out of um out of very little really, mostly stuff to do with Jordan Pickford or, or whatever. But uh, um yeah, and you know Newcastle's been saying as a game that you know we we really want to try and get one over on, and a few times we managed to do that since the money's come in. But at the same time, there have been some you know disastrous results, and uh, I think back to the one last season, the four one at Goodison, um towards the end of April where I really thought that was it. We were running out of home matches. Um and our away from at that time was abysmal. I I couldn't see a way out of it. And you know, somehow we managed to uh you know avoid the drop. But uh it's getting towards that point in the situation again where it's getting pretty desperate and people are starting to think where are these um where are these wins actually going to come from? Um and you know I've been the um you know I've I've backed Deitch a lot and you know again I'd argued a lot with people that um have said his time is up, but um it gets harder. It does get harder with with each um disappointing result now. And you know, uh, I I I don't like when people just point to the numbers, you know, and say like it's, it's so many games without a win or whatever, and, and you know, kind of ignore the bigger context. But I can't defend the uh the Bournemouth match whatsoever. We were dreadful. We um just showed no real real attacking intent, and you know, people will point to uh. You know the the eventual winner for Bournemouth being quite fortunate, but we we got very similar for our goal and um and and yeah before that we would barely created anything. Um, obviously you know we should have had a penalty decision. Um, which I, I'm uh I I can't understand why that wasn't given. And you know people can argue that if we would scored that we take the lead. And you know typically when we take the lead we don't tend to lose matches. It's only happened once or twice since we got that gym. But you know it's all. It's but the maybes, and we still, based on our performance, deserve to get nothing out of that. Um, I don't want to dwell on the Bournemouth match too much in um in this video. Obviously, there are plenty of um reaction videos on the top of the channel that you can check out that are devoted to that topic. Um, but it does obviously you know contribute with Newcastle being so soon after, um, and as I say, um, suddenly becoming a lot more significant now we've dropped these points away at Bournemouth, um. And yes, like I say, I think it was a bit of a deflating result um, away at Bournemouth. You know, with it being so long after the break, I think a lot of us, myself included, you know, perhaps a little naive, you know, you look at it and think that well, it's three weeks away, you know, we can have a bit of a reset. And, you know, you could tell confidence was very low in the team. You know, we can get away for a few days, go to Portugal, get reinvigorated, you know, get the confidence back up and, and hit these last few games hard. And... Uh, yeah, as it turned out, that wasn't what happened at Bournemouth at all. And uh, so now, yeah, it's kind of back to square one again, really, I guess. So, uh, yeah, frustrating. And as I say, uh, it all leads into this Newcastle match now. And, of course, at the weekend, they themselves got a very positive result. And, you know, we're looking down and out against West Ham. We're having horrendous luck with injuries. Obviously, Gordon got sent off towards the end as well. Um, but, you know, still managed to launch an incredible comeback. Um and you know we're, we're really good value for that comeback as well, and uh you know they haven't had the uh, the best of times of things recently either, but I I can see them you know really kicking on um towards the end of the season and uh I'm not um I'm not completely clear on what the picture is but you know if there's still a chance an outside chance of them getting um into the European places you know Europa League or Conference League or whatever it is then I think they're going to give that a very good push now, and uh, I have the feeling the nasty feeling that we're going to get caught up um quite a bit in that. Um, you know, like I say, our record up at Newcastle has not been very good over the years and uh as I say, I think they're gonna have a lot of confidence behind them now and uh and as I say, they'll be wanting to get one over on us as well. You know, look at you look at the result 
uh, in the reverse fixture, you know, probably our best performance of the season really back in December. Um, and yeah, they, they'll definitely be wanted to uh, get some revenge for that. As I say, you know, they are going to be missing a lot of key players. You know, Gordon in particular is going to stand out as uh, one of those key players. You know, um, I'm sure, you know, he didn't have the best of games in that 3 that I've just mentioned. But uh, yeah, so he, he would have definitely wanted to, um, you know, to rectify that fact and, you know, get one over on our supporters who, let's be honest, uh, don't exactly give him the warmest reception whenever he comes back to Goodison. But uh, yes, obviously, he's going to miss out on that opportunity. And uh so, yeah, like I said, they're going to be missing a lot of players, but I don't know, for me, it is looking quite hopeless, I think. I, I, I really don't see a world in which we uh, get a result there. And as I say, I'm usually very positive about us, and especially, you know, with Deitch and whatever. And most most games, even if, you know, we don't manage to get the result, I can still see what we're trying to do and we're creating stuff. Just didn't see any of that at Bournemouth, really, which is concerning. Um weren't quite as defensively solid as, as we used to be as well, but obviously Mikalenko, uh hopefully coming back might change that fact. But, you know, it, it does seem to almost be clinging on to stuff. And I think, in a way, for me, this is still almost, I guess, a bit of a free hit. I think it's the matches after this that are um, going to be really crucial. Obviously, you look at Burnley on Saturday, that's back at Goodison. I think it's going to be another one of these where, for the last few games of the season at Goodison, we really rally and you do the marches and get the atmosphere going again a bit. Hopefully, as it has been the last two seasons, that's going to be enough to get us over the line. But it's crazy, really, how reliant this group of players are on things like that. And, uh, yeah, a cause for concern. But, yeah, I guess, you know, looking forward to looking to the Newcastle game, you'd imagine, um, obviously, Coleman had a, you know, a nightmare uh, with the own goal, but I don't really... You know, I saw a lot of people, I think, quite unfairly blaming him for it. I think it was just a miscommunication, really. You could argue Bramfrey could have cleared it, Pickford probably should have claimed it, and, you know, Coleman's just got a split second to try and move out of the way of it, and um, just as it happens, it just doesn't work out for him. I think he was very unlucky, and I felt very sorry for him because I thought he had a really good game before that. Um, you know, uh, hasn't played much this season. He struggled with injuries a lot, but was in good form for Ireland over the break and then came back and I think did a really solid job. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd keep him in. Um, I think Godfrey needs to be dropped, you know, especially if Mikhailenko's back. I definitely think Godfrey needs to be dropped. I just don't think he's good enough. I, I say play him, play that position as he always is. But at the same time, in airily in particular, he really struggles. And, you know, there's that stat going around that, um, a few weeks ago that we hadn't conceded a headed goal all season. We've now conceded quite a few and all of them, I'd say, have been ones that Godfrey should have won. You know, you look at that Sri Lanka header, um, I think Godfrey should have done better for that, if I'm being brutally honest. So, uh, yeah, I, I definitely think he needs to be dropped and get Mikalenko back in. And then, yeah, I mean, you look ahead to the rest of the pitch and um, what else is there, really? You know, Dan Juma only just come back into training. I doubt he's going to be ready for Tuesday. Maybe he might be ready for Saturday against Burnley. I don't know. But um, I can't see him being thrust straight back into the side at the expense of either McNeil or Hammerson. But, you know, Young came on and was equally as bad, if not worse. He was he was dreadful when he came on. I couldn't believe that substitution. Um, as I say, as bad as McNeil and Hammerson were, putting Young at that, at that wing, that I didn't understand that substitution at all. So... Um, by process of elimination, you've got to stick with them really um, on the wings. And then uh, do you put Adrissa Garner Gay back in? Maybe. I'm not sure. I think I think Anana needs to play. Um, you know, I, I think one of the few players in that team who can pick out a pass. There's an argument to be made that Gomez should maybe come back in. You know, Decore has not been himself since he came out from the injury at all. He's just adding very little. I think we at times miss that quality of, you know, someone who's actually able to pick out a pass. Um, and when Gomez come on, we had that a little bit more, you know, we were, we had a little bit more coherence going forward, but still not loads. And we we really don't seem to know what we're doing going forward, which is a real concern. Um, we seem very reliant on set pieces and have been for a while now. And I think that's, the more I look at it, I think that's kind of what's responsible for these high XGs that we keep seeing in games where we've, um, where we've lost. But, you know, corners and, and free kicks they are a great way to, to rack up xg just because you know you're so close to the goal and if you manage to win a header which you know based on the tall players we have you know and how good we are in the air that's going to happen a lot 
is a little more misleading than uh than it than has been let on, I guess. So yeah, like I said, there's all sorts of things going on. And then obviously I guess, you know, another argument selection wise that we had um Calvert Lewin or Beto. I actually thought Calvert Lewin played quite well against Bournemouth. Some people might disagree with me on that one, but um, you know, I thought he had a very unlucky chance in the first half. It was a very good save. Probably should have won a penalty, as we've discussed. Um and I'd like to think he would have put that away, um, as opposed to Beto missing the one against West Ham, of course. Cavalier's record from penalties is actually pretty good for us. Um, and as I say, that that could have changed things as badly as we played. You know, we could have just sat in and hopefully defended that lead like we've done so many times under Deitch before. <clears throat> but as I say, it's all what about me, really. And the fact is, you know, like I say, other than that, we didn't do much. Um, but yeah, based on that, I think I would maybe still start Calvert Lewin. I think I quite like Beto coming on as a sub, and you know they've got used to us playing a certain way, and then Beto can kind of mix things up a little bit more, causes a bit more chaos, you know, and and has that boundless energy that can get at tireless defenders and hopefully force mistakes. That's my thinking anyway. And uh, um, but yeah, like I say, um, I'm being completely honest. I'm not expecting very much from this Newcastle game, and if you ask me for a prediction now, I'd probably say something like two nil. To Newcastle, I can't see a score in a goal. Um, and yeah, I just think they'll manage to pick us apart a little bit. And uh, yeah, so yeah, not the most um, optimistic of, of um, videos here, but you know, that's um, that's kind of the situation at Everton at the moment. But uh, yeah, um, regardless, um, please leave a like if you enjoyed, comment below giving your thoughts. Looking ahead to the Newcastle game, who would you be starting? Who would you be dropping? Um and what um what are your score predictions? Are you um as pessimistic as me, or do you think we might be able to at least um salvage something from this game? Um and uh, yeah, please subscribe to the Toffee Blues channel for more Everton content, and we will see you in the next video. Cheers.